Welcome. You have found the Quarenta podcast. 40 minutes of chat around all things music. Today, we have Javier Sanchez, a talented young bass player that has found his way from the heart of Madrid to Boston and now has settled in Finland. He's a graduate from the Complutense University of Madrid, the Berkeley College of Music, and more recently, the Sibelius Academy, here at the University of Arts at Helsinki. Although as a musician, he has dived into the universes of rock, jazz, and world music, he has returned to his first true love, flamenco. Using folk music and flamenco as a case study, he has come up with a fascinating new theory of how to turn his bass, well, any low register music instrument really, into a dialogue with the singer. We did not go into great detail about that research or how it would become a doctoral degree. That must be left for another time. As with my other guests, I was more interested in his origin story of sorts, a subject I'm sure will captivate you all. So relax and listen to his story. Javier Sanchez Perez. Okay. So, anyways, thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting. Oi. No worries. Okay, so it's, it's not Spanish wine. No, it's, it's, it's Clav Clavis uh, yeah. new APA brew. Yeah, it's, it's Finnish made, <laughs> homemade beer, so I think we're... So, cheers. Cheers, hello. So, 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 mm. It's good. Very nice. Very so, thank you for doing this. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. And um, although we, we met we met at SIBO, well, no, we didn't meet at SIBO, we, we met at Omex. Omex, 2016? Yeah. I think, 2016. Yeah, in, in Santiago, yeah. Compostela. And, um, I mean, we've been talking, but there's still lots of things I don't know about you. And I'm really be interested because you have this crazy background. So, you actually have a Galician grandmother. Yeah, my grandmother was from Orense. And the, and the other side of your family? From the south and from the center south, from Castilla-La Mancha. Mm. Mm. But you don't, it's not from your family that is flamenco. No, definitely not. How, no. how does that come but maybe into your life? That's a good question. Maybe that's why I, I'm interested in learning more mm. about it, because I started to actually research and, yeah. and investigate, and it's something that actually you, and you need to look for it. Okay. I remember when I was in, I always listened to flamenco when I was a child. My father always loved it, and I always admired the, the, the fire. Yeah. But I was mm, very interested always in the music side. I, I was like very eager to play and to like... But when did you start playing? The, how young were you? I think I was like around seven, eight years really? old when I played the clarinet. Oh! In a music school. I started, okay. yeah. <laughs> you started with the clarinet? Exactly. Okay. And then I, maybe I was not too into it, and I think it was like the classical education that I was getting in the school. Maybe it was not the most. Mm, it wasn't for you. Yes. So I stopped the clarinet, and then I'm, when I was a teenager, like 14 years old, I took the electric bass. Mm. I was playing in a high school band with my friends. That's how it started. And mm. then I was quite into it, and I started writing lyrics. That was the first thing I started to do. Uh -huh. Yeah, I did that as well. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know, but you you knew how to play an instrument. I didn't, so I, I wrote lyrics for my friends when I was a teenager. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you had, but it was like pop, pop, rock. Or? It was more like rock, okay. like this kind of Spanish in rock. Madrid. In Madrid, yes. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea about how to play the bass actually, but I just like uh, <laughs> I just say, yeah, I can do it, and then I kind yeah. of like learn on the on the yeah, geek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, that's how we all do <laughs> it. Yeah, but but then you end up in Berkeley. That's yes, a, yes. So you mm -hmm. you continued to study. You started studying the bass. Yes, the journey so that I fell in love with the bass. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was like I like music and I like songs and I like to write uh, lyrics and I start to compose some songs. So I I was quite mm -hmm. into it, and then through that I decided to. 
like be a professional musician. Mm. So when I graduated, I was studying music. When I graduated from, from the high school, mm. I took this gap year before going to the university. And that year, I was the whole year studying with this like a uh, guru um, mm. teacher who who was one of the first um, Spanish guys who went to Berkeley back okay. in the, um, I think back in the 70s or maybe even late 60s. So he's like a he he wrote many books and like he's quite a big name in yeah. in the Spanish music industry. And he, uh, music education, and then I studied with him. I was lucky to to get to study with him. So, and then my classmate was this American guy, one American bass player who was yeah. living in Madrid. So we were doing a lot of things in English. So for me, it was like a, quite natural to study the Berkeley books and like uh, I, I was kind of like getting into jazz, but maybe I came more from a rock or more from mm. like. A, Popular music. I I played in some like summer bands in Spain. Yeah. It's quite a thing. You can make some money with that. So I was saving money doing that. And then that gap year, I was like playing with every place in town. I was playing with many bands. And you were actually being a musician. Yeah, I was being a musician. <laughs> yeah, for a whole year. Yeah. That's, that's the dream. For how old were you? 18, 18 17, yeah. 16. So you were actually being a musician. Yeah, quite bad, but yeah. well, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to. Yeah. yeah, but I I learned a lot and I play some gigs and we I I was like um, then g getting into other kind of bands and open to different styles. Yeah, but you mm. until you were eighteen in high school was it like a trade school where you were learning music mm. or you just learning music on the side? On the and, side, yeah. And doing normal high school, yeah, mm. like me. Was yeah. like normal yeah. public high school. Okay, so it took one year. Oh, yeah, and your folks were like, ah, I hope this musician thing yeah. works for him. <laughs> yeah. So were they supportive? But the, they were supporting. They were supporting. Yeah. I did a bit like um, my mother always encouraged me to study something mm. like safe. So mm -hmm. after, yeah. <laughs> so after that year, I, I yeah. <laughs> Something, Something sta stable, or yeah, yeah, yeah. And, no, no, yeah. mm, and none of my family are musicians, so actually that was like, a, yeah. like a bit like scary for for them, I think. Yeah, of course. But then I I went to the university to study music education. Um, I studied in the evenings and in the mornings I was studying in the jazz school, okay. and then after I was like practicing with the band and skipping many lessons to play. <laughs> So the studies were not like this music no, education not studies. A no, not at all. <laughs> yeah. It was just because of the degree, actually. Yeah. Uh, but I get to know some people there, good friends, and I started to have my first experience in education. Okay. And I think I've been always quite good with the like reading and memorizing things. So I was not, never very hard working student for mm. the um, like academic papers, but I somehow I get the information quite mm. fast in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I mean, you've been doing it for so long in bands and everything. So maybe yeah. Then it comes natural, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe that was a good idea to go to the university because I really discovered I really like writing and like I like mm. um, um, researching. That was my like first seed. So what, I what think. was the first university you went? It was uh, University Complutense of Madrid. Okay. Mm, we were a class, the music class, um, and uh, I did it in three years. And it was a good idea because... And it was pedagogical. So pedagogical, music yeah. pedagogy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and then I, was, I complete one diploma in this jazz school, although I never was playing so much jazz. I was very interested in different kind of stuff, bands, yeah. exactly. Um, yeah. And it was also quite hard to get money playing jazz uh, at oh. my age in Madrid. So okay. I, I, I was a little bit more successful with the pop yeah, rock the or... Stuff, yeah. Yeah. And how, how does Berkeley just... It was, I think, when I started to study with this um, teacher. He told me that he was so in Berkeley. So you were we kind were, of thinking yeah. about it all through your exactly. university years. And, and then, then th through the university years was a good idea because um, when you get the degree, I could transfer many credits. So I think mm. that was also one good idea. So I, the degree was four years. I did it in two and a half, three years. Which degree are you speaking The Berkeley. About now? Berkeley, oh, okay. yeah. So you, you, you moved there and you really... Worked yeah, really hard. The day Very too. hard. Yeah, yeah, there. And I got a scholarship. That was okay. the so I give it a try. I prepare some solo pieces, and there for the audition I was playing flamenco bass. That was okay. the that was the thing. 
In, at Berkeley. In the audition, yeah. to come to Berkeley. I did the audition in Valencia. They have this uh, European campus in, yeah. in Valencia. So I remember I was so scared there. I went I there. Bet. And, yeah. Yeah, it's now, now or never. Mm. And Victor Mendoza was in the jury and I get the scholarship. And then that's how I started to play the flamenco bass. I, mm. I started to get like uh, more into it and transcribe a lot of things from Carlos Benavent. And, and you move. I moved to Boston. Yes. You moved to Boston. Yeah. And you really start to learn the language then. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it was like a crash mm -hmm. course on life, I guess. Yeah. Imagine. How different is it? I've never been to the United States. I think it was a fantastic experience yeah. for me. It was, I think it was very positive. That's the thing I, I think at the time. Because when I was in, in Spain, there was this like economic crisis, big mm. thing. Was it 2008? 2000, well, 2013, 2012 oh, okay. when I went. So yeah, it was yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, like um, in the highest yeah. peak of the... Yeah. So the, the, the vibe was very negative in, in the whole country. I know. <laughs> I was in Portugal yeah. at the time. Everybody was like, well, there is no job for you guys. It doesn't matter that you get a degree because... Remember, you know, so remember that um, in the newspapers they called Portugal, it Italy, Greece and Spain the pigs. Mm. Remember that in the English newspapers. I, okay. mm. Yeah, because it was the southern European exactly. countries that... Mm. Yeah. We didn't work. No, it was quite negative. It was super, it was super yeah. depressing to do art or to do exactly. any kind of thing. Mm. And that kind of feeling that is kind of like a lost generation. I, I think I had yes. that insecurity yes. feeling for a long time. Totally. Yeah. And then I remember when we were in the university, we were like striking a lot, like a lot of mm. lessons were cancelled. We strike there and Jesus. there was all the time like something yeah. going on. A, so, com a complete different experience. Yeah. yeah and then but, when I went to Boston, I I felt so positive, like I was in the classroom and then the other students, <laughs> very international by the way, like everybody was from all over the place, but kind of this American dream kind of like stereotype. <laughs> stereotype, yeah. Yeah, like everybody wants to have, yeah, I want to have my own company and I, how do you see yourself in 10 years? Like, yeah, I will have this successful company, I will make company. this. Or like a business idea, or like okay, there yeah, yeah. was much more yeah. entrepreneur, or like yes. a big successful band, I would be a successful artist, okay. something like that. So that was for me was like, wow, these guys are really like uh, much more like yeah. optimistic. Like yeah. um, in Spain was like maybe the speech was quite different, like yeah. find something safe, work for the government, something like that. Yeah. So yeah, so I like that, and that was a like very lift experience for me, and I learned a lot of. Uh, computer technology and mm. um, like a little bit production and um, s recording techniques and I record yeah. some videos. I before why well, I went there I was playing with quite a successful band and I through that I got the endorsement of this German brand of basses Warwick. Oh, so okay. I made some videos from that band and that was a little bit like helping me also with the becoming like a more known yeah. name in the bass. And then you finish Berkeley. Yeah, I graduated from Berkeley. And now, and, uh, now what? <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. You, you had Spain, which was more or less, it was still a mess. Yeah, it was. Portugal and Italy and mm, the South European countries were a mess. Still. It was still a mess. Maybe the, I was, I stayed for, for some, like, time in the US thinking if I should stay, like, um, in mm. New York, I was very interested. Mm. But then it was very expensive and the idea of applying for these visas, although I could have ah, stayed yeah. because I had the degree. But then I, I decided to, to give it a try to Europe. Okay. And that was through like, meeting some people that I get to know this uh, d department in Sibelius Academy. Okay. And I was, because I was interested in going more into the um, like, global music and world music. Yeah, and I was you were, by now you were completely into this flamenco bass. Flamenco jazz and yeah. improvisation and yeah, yeah, yeah. mixing. And I make an album in Boston, and then I, with that album, I came to Finland to do the audition. Okay. And I got... Uh, what was that album? The first album of mm. Cuajero. Oh, you did it in Boston? Yeah, I recorded it in Boston, Spain, and Finland. Mm. But the main, the main recording session was in, in Boston. Okay. Then I completed the album with the rest of so, the takes. So, in, yeah. Yeah. So you had, you had that? I had that, like, a little bit like as a CV and my Berkeley yeah, yeah, degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came here, yeah. and I applied for the university. I luckily got the study place. How many years was that? 
2015, actually. Five years ago already? Yeah. You've been here for five years in Finland? Yeah, five years in Finland. Yeah. And, um, yeah, actually, I applied for both Sibelius Academy and Metropolia. Okay. And I got the, in the master studies in both. Okay. So I took both of the places and I just put on hold the study place in Metropolia. Okay. Yeah, so I did the Glomas. <laughs> you could pick. <laughs> yeah, I, could, I, I yeah. was lucky, I think, to get into both places in 2015. So I, I could do that, and I, with that album I released it. Uh, I came 2015 in the summertime, and then I released the album in December that year. And it was released through Global Music Center. So okay. everything, I was looking for somebody in Finland to, to, uh, like to release it. Yeah. And it's I think a super nice album. Thank you so much. I really, yeah. I really, really love it. Thank I don't you. say it just for saying it. Thank you. It's really special. Yeah, I think it was really special moment. And I put together a band um, with uh, some <coughs> musicians I met, and that was the first band I had in Finland. Mm -hmm. So I put it together, and then through that I start to play with more people. But at the beginning, when I came here, like no, nobody know me. I want to remember. Yeah. I, I went to the jam sessions. I went to some bars in town. Nobody really cared. Mm, just <laughs> just a, guy, a guy with a bass. But no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's almost as bad as a backpack. You're, you're <laughs> right, almost. Almost as bad. You're right with a bass, and people go like, oh. like "Yeah, almost." We're, as we're doing music here. What? The <laughs> <laughs> like, well, but actually, it's it's interesting. Even if I'm joking, because I mean. We all know what a violin, what a piano, whatever, you know, mm. we're, we're used to it. And we're super used to, to a bass um, or an electric bass. And sometimes someone plays it in such a special way that then you go like, oh, mm. this, is, this is not the boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom thing that you hear on, on radio exactly, yeah. all over the place because every band has a, mm. has a bass and it becomes quite, yeah. how shall I say, I, how shall I say it? Quite um, lazy, mm. you know, because yeah. it, it really pushes the music forward and gives it what it yeah. needs, and then it becomes almost like a tool. Mm. Yeah, of course, the, yeah. the rock, of course, the band has to have a bass. Bass you know? make people dance. Yeah. That's kind of like the yeah. the main thing. If you want to make danceable music, you need to have a good bass yeah. line, yeah. Uh, a good yeah. bass sound. Although. Nowadays it can be like a synthesizer, it doesn't have to be yeah, it's a bass real line. instrument, yeah, yeah, but yeah, a bass yeah, line, yeah. a good sound, and then you make but, people dance. But you, you were over, mm. you were a little bit past that. Yeah, I was trying to yeah. achieve something different. I, I guess was uh, when I was in Berkeley, I studied with Steve Bailey, one teacher who played fretless bass. Mm -hmm. I really admire him, and then through him I start to like... Uh, kind of like emulate that sound and okay. Carlos Benavent as well. So I think fretless bass, I could find this kind of expression with the glissandos and then... Mm. Yeah. So that has been my focus for for like five, six years at least. I was doing fretless bass quite intensively. Okay. Then through that, when I came to the masters, I just got a double bass and I started to play double okay. bass like crazy. That was the thing. I wanted to really study double bass. And one of the big interest for me in Sibelius Academy was the string department and also study yeah. like with the like classical double bass with the bow technique. Yeah. That was something in 2015 was totally new. I started 2015 playing the double bass. Yeah. So I, I mean, but you were in the right place. Yeah, I think... With all the departments, you can just exactly, yeah. go and get the skills. It was a really, really, nice. really good position. I, I really enjoyed it and... I think I was absorbing a lot. I remember those years I was like really like absorbing every time, 24-7. Mm. And uh, I, through the university, I managed to go for uh, two semesters to Denmark. Okay. Yes. And that also have a big impact on, on my education because I, one of the teachers, uh, Chape, we call him, he, thank you, <laughs> he, he also um, studied in Berkeley, like, many, uh -huh. many years ago. And he's a great composer and great arranger, and I learned so much from, from him. So I decided that I wanted to do this final project to make a recording and concert with a big band. So it was like an orchestra of 18 musicians, and it was just very, very crazy to put the band together. And that was my <laughs> final project. So I put, I arranged music like every day I was arranging music. Every night I was writing, 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 arranging. And then that 
was the the root of the second album of Cogero, that okay. session in, in Denmark. And then that took me one more year to finish. And I came to Finland, I record like the rest of the parts or the rest some of the songs with a small ensemble. Yeah. And I was also negotiating with the label how to release it and when to do it, it was 2019 November last year. So six yeah. months ago or six, seven months ago already. And uh, yeah, I recorded with uh, flamenco singers in Madrid. And that was also very, very good. I was uh, in the studio of Ruben Maldonado and uh, Enrique Piculave recorded and mm. Rafita de Madrid, like uh, quite like an uh, incredible artist. Mm. I was learning so much. And so I was, I think the main difference from this second album was including the voice, including the vocals. In the first album, there were vocals. Mm. But in this second album was like more like a singing, like a, and also like a, um, uh, text. The first album was like melodic, more instrumental, melodic yeah. instrumental, like yeah. a, using the voice as a melodic instrument. Tell me a little bit about this old flamenco thing, because um, of course it's a, it's a traditional expression, like s so many forms of of traditional mm -hmm. music or folk music, let's call it. And then this, we are all a product of this, let's call it contemporary folk, mm -hmm. or, I don't know, there's so many labels that you can use, progressive yeah. folk, contemporary folk, yeah. new folk, you know, mm. and in flamenco there's, there's that as yes. well. Is it, what do you call it, neo, mm. neo flamenco, or new flamenco? It, it's a really good discussion, I yeah. think we are, at this point we are beyond the term new flamenco mm -hmm. but the term nuevo flamenco new flamenco was a really big thing in the 80s okay so i think flamenco is a hybrid like every music style came from mixed in other styles yeah. so you can see that in the if you look back but at the history po post radio mm. um, if if we start thinking or talking about after the invention of the radio and radio became really popular and yeah. in every household, then it's, it starts to get really difficult to speak strictly about a particular tradition mm. in one place that mm. had no contact with exactly. I don't think that ever ac actually happened in history because people traveled, but mm. do you feel that? I feel that yeah. after the radio, uh, for instance, in my case, it's more about bagpipes. Yeah. You know, there's this guy in Spain, actually. Um, that did his PhD about uh, bagpipe in Asturias. Mm. And in his PhD, um, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt because I'm not fully into his work, but from what I gathered, so he kind of demonstrates that most of the super old traditional um, pipe tunes that are, were considered to be centuries old Many of them are like uh, radio successes or from early opera. So, so can you imagine, you know, not having a proper radio in your village, mm -hmm. but having heard somewhere of this amazing opera singer yeah. or this, everyone is talking about this guy, and just go to the piper and say, can you please yeah. play this or tune they, because they... we want to dance. Mm -hmm. And then the piper just makes what he can. Exactly, a variation. You know, a variation, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then everything starts mm. to get mixed and then you go, yeah. oh no, this tune has been here in the village for many centuries. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's the it's yeah. our Piper's tune. One, once I talked to a folklorist in Spain about this mm. topic, very interesting, yeah. because I, I say to him, like, uh, I was as interested in improvisation in the yeah. folk music. And he was saying, well, folk music is always improvisation. The way is like when a mother tell a story to a kid before going yeah. to bed, she never tells the same story. Yeah. Those twists and those changes and then yeah. the, the, the expression and the way she tells the story, the, dra the dramatic line, that's what makes the story interesting. Yeah. The story has been the same story that mothers tell to kids. Yeah, forever. Forever, always yeah. the same story. But the mother, remember her mother telling the story, then she reproduced, but she variates. Yeah. Why? Yeah. She does it naturally because, of course, she lives in a society. Yeah. It has changed. Yeah. The the politics are different. Nothing the is the culture. really fixed. Yeah. yeah. So then, that's, she doesn't think that she's improvising. She's just mm. trying to make it more exciting. But you you, you were you were saying that 
New flamenco was an important thing in the ah, 80s. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was there. If we go, I mean, flamenco is not considered by, by many, many people, most of the people, it's not considered folk music. Okay. Okay? So it's like, uh, it, it's, if you look at the history, as we know the style nowadays, it came after the industrial era or during the industrial era with the new cities yeah. and most of the flamenco performances has started as we know it nowadays in Paris okay so it was like a big thing very popular there was this demand of exoticism okay and i think it's the same as fado flamenco and fado Probably, were yeah. at, at, were kind of yeah. created at the same time yeah. and maybe rebetica in greece and Italy, Neapolitan song, all of those styles yeah. were quite contemporary, the same industrialization. They were happening new theaters, new demands, new audiences, big cities. Yeah. People have money to go to see An urban phenomenon. Exactly. Yeah. So it's interesting that although it has roots on tradition that comes from the south of Spain and mm. belong to Romani culture and also bring like by Indian or Middle yeah. Eastern days out of influences, but it's actually as we know nowadays the numbers made through the dancing and the dress and the mm, whole the style, okay. the whole temperament of the style. Interesting, you it say. came as a as a way to okay, this is going to be flamenco. Yeah. Fado is this kind of like a very introspective and deep and sad yeah. and like broken flamenco soul and flamenco is going to be fire and yeah. um, although although i think there's also that there is also this yeah. inner like of course because yeah. i mean father like restrain flamenco, and yeah. release kind of thing exactly yeah. but i think the fado artist decided to make it more this kind of like sad Probably. storytelling and so on and Probably, the flamenco yeah. decided to yeah. make it more like a fire and like yeah. uh, intense emotions Interesting. I don't know. There's a little yeah. bit different, not. Mm, yeah, yeah I, I don't know much about it, and, yeah. and there's there's been research that that pushes it even further. Uh, Fado as a more ancient expression, but you know. But that, not that's not what that's what you always want yeah. to. You want to everything to be super old, and sometimes it isn't. <laughs> but, sometimes it isn't because yeah. I, because it's more like a. I think in Portugal many people don't consider Fado as a folk music. <sighs> So it's I don't know. So it's the I same in Spain. It's a discussion. Yeah, yeah. But but I understand. It's yeah. it's not it's not that far fetched that you should compare them. Yes, I understand. Mm. Because they are very limited in scope. Yeah. And in place, geographical place. It's not mm. like people think that bullfighting and flamenco is all over Spain. Exactly. <laughs> it, no, it, it is not. Is. Spain is a very 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 big country. Yeah, there's out with of lots of cultures in it, you know. This is, we're mm, speaking about a very precise yeah. region with a very precise culture, yeah. with a very precise type of weather, exactly. you know, with a and very precise accent and so on. And there is yeah. places where there is a living tradition, like mm. uh, for, for example in Jerez, there is a living tradition. Mm. And somehow the Romani culture has mixed with the local culture yeah, in a yeah. way very That's special, very unique. An, no, yeah. Yeah. New thing. New thing. And then yeah. there is, of course, a tradition. And then there is the Andalusian folk songs. Those mm. are a little bit different than flamenco as we know the style. And everything came like to f one step farther through the guitar. I think that was the thing. At the beginning, the guitar was like a very primitive, if you think about it. Mm. It was like a way to, it was a very rhythmic uh, instrument, adding a lot of like um, rhythmic lines and the harmonies were very, very fixed and simple, yes, not, nothing yes. to, of course, very unique are harmonies, but nothing to... It wasn't shiny. Yeah. Not uh, as, a, like, as we know it nowadays. Mm. All of that happened in the 70s. Okay, so there's, so, there's a... Yeah, and that's the, what we might call new flamenco. New exactly, yeah. no flamenco, 70s, 80s. Yeah. And, now, and now we are pa pa past... We are beyond that, I think. Beyond that. Yeah, that's and now what, man? Now I think there has been a look back to the tradition. Mm -hmm. like people are like, uh, looking back to the roots. In many in many ways, because sometimes I think there is these movements that sometimes you go like very innovative and then you go very looking back, but it's changing because I saw many performances of flamenco with DJ, no guitar, and or saxophone, and uh, flamenco jazz is quite a big thing, and it was quite a big thing even before that. And there's great records like Vince Mendoza, Jazz España, that's mm. a fantastic album, actually more than one. 
of course, Chick Corea like took it to really far. Mm. Miles Davis even make these sketches of Spain. So it, yeah. it's a big, yeah, so. you know, it has been always like a, this kind of Spanish um, uh, Iberism, Iberism, or mm. like Spanish like flavor yeah. has been added to to many many records in yeah. jazz and in and in many genres. And then. The influences from Latin America, I think they are huge, actually, in, in flamenco. In the new flamenco. In the new flamenco, yeah. exactly. Or the post-new post post flamenco. flamenco yeah. But yeah. also before, because, okay. for example, if you look like styles like Colombiana, that's Pepe Marchena create mm. that palo, not, maybe I'm wrong, but around the 30s, I think. Mm. So that was a style that was like totally created through taking music from Colombia. Yeah. Although this, uh, this like back and forth, yeah, that's rumba what, come from Cuba, yes. all the immigrants that yeah, came the rumba, back from Cuba. Yeah, even with bagpipes and yeah. in Galicia, yeah. So it's, it's this phenomenon of what they call the comeback. Yeah. People that emigrated and somehow... And then come back. Come yeah. back or bring stuff back. That's really interesting. It's very interesting. And that, that thing that the, the Spanish uh, people gave so much to the, like, the music of uh, Latin America, but Latin America gave Came so back, much. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And not only Latin Same America. With Brazil, yeah. Also Africa, like yeah. uh, Africa is 20 kilometers from the south of Spain, but yes. the slaves were taken from Africa to Cuba. Yes, and then it wasn't coming back. So it's yeah. kind of like it a, wasn't. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the same with, with Brazil. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't direct. Yeah, mm -hmm. although it, if you look at straight is, line, it's like yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's weird, right? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been? I haven't been to Morocco or anything. Have you ever crossed? I've been, yeah, in the north of. I have mm. to do it. It's so silly. Mm -hmm. When you look at the map, it's right there. It's right there, and it's yeah. so similar. Like, yeah. and yes, mm, <laughs> the, it's very similar. The, the, yeah, the landscape and yeah, the food, the, the way the yeah. culture. But uh, but yeah, the um, yeah, I think that that's the interesting thing about this back and forth and new new instruments in flamenco like cajon. It came yeah. in the seventies, and that comes from South America, and then congas, the new flamenco artists. Yeah. There was this record label that my, when I was a child, my father always listened to those albums. It was called Nuevos Medios. And those were the, that label created the term Nuevo Flamenco. Okay. And they produce like... So it's, it's like Irish music or Celtic music? Mm, it was it created through a label. Exactly, yeah. yeah. They yeah. need to sell it as something uh -huh. special. And they always have session musicians from South America and okay. jazz musicians, rock musicians, blues musicians. Okay. And, they, you know, it was like a thing. And I, I like that. I always grew up in a big city where everything is mixed. Nobody plays traditional unless you go out to Atabla in Madrid. Yeah. But everything is very, very mixed. So, and people like that, actually appreciate yeah, it. But it's, it's interesting yeah. how somehow with that kind of apparent arbitrary mixing, there is this kind of e e essence, essence that gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Mm. And you, you identify more and more as being the main, the main uh, tree, tree trunk of flamenco. So you can have many leaves, and yeah. many branches, but there's something that the leaves and the branches keep adding to that main strong exactly. you know, core of... I'm guessing, I'm guessing mm. that, it's, that it happens, you it's know, about, because, yeah, it's, right. because it's, it's quite like, immediate. When you hear mm. just kind of this hint yeah. of flamenco, you kind of identify it. So yeah. there's something very strong there, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. And many people who are like into flamenco, they don't belong nowadays to, they don't come from a flamenco background. Okay. Because nowadays everything is much more structured than it was before. So it's accessible for many people. Mm. And they are great international artists. And you told me that if the traditionalists, let's call it, the guys that are really into the family traditions mm. and so on, and that really are into the culture, they are actually open. You were you were able to I think to speak with them. Very open-minded. Always when I you told me that the, was it. Am I wrong that you found that those guys are even more open sometimes yes. than very uh, achieved. You know. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so the guys that are drinking yeah. from the fountain <laughs> are actually mm. more okay yes, I, with. Yeah. yeah. I always talk to like great guitar players, like uh, flamenco guitar players, like amazing guys, and they are always. They had, when we have a beer, they were talking mm. like, but have you listened to Kurus and Bingle? I love that guy. That's yeah. amazing music. I love, like, first I was into Pat Metheny, but then I, <laughs> I discovered cool music. And yeah, 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 the New yeah. York, and they were, I was sitting with this flamenco guy. I was like, wow, you know, you are such a legend, but you are so interested on, on everything else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And those are the guys, because they, then when they play, they have the 
flamencura, you know, they have the mm. flamenco flavor. That's something you cannot hide. Yeah. If somebody, it's a beautiful person, it doesn't matter what he does. Yeah, it's what gonna he dresses. Be, or, yeah, yeah, it's going to be beautiful. So the, these guys are flamenco, they are flamenco. Mm. But the, the way they listen to music, the way they absorb, it's incredible. They are very open-minded, most of them. Mm. And mm. when I was recording with, for example, Piculave and Rafita, they were asking me, but do you want me to sing it like flamenco way? And I was thinking, <laughs> well, what do you think? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> because it was okay doing because, something else. Because, yeah. my, because my music and the music of, that I do in Cuajero is, is it's not flamenco per se. Well, it's not, it, has the it is, but it isn't, yeah. yeah. So, of course, if you look for the roots and you look for the flamenco, yeah, and but you, can, you, you find can it. smell it. Yeah, you can smell it. Yeah. But... Uh, for yeah, a flamenco it's guy, it's not the soniquete that they do yeah, all the time. It's yeah, not the, yeah, like, the... <laughs> so they were like, yeah, yeah, they want me to sing it. Really? In flamenco? Or do you want, want me to do something new <laughs> for you? Yeah, they were asking. <laughs> like, it's really interesting. Yeah. But you've, you've been, I mean, from what you're telling me, you've been into this for many, many years. And yeah, already. Like on, on, on the new world, <laughs> on the old world, <laughs> in, in Finland. But I know that for the last three years, you really... At least for the last three years, you decided, okay, there's stuff here that I could actually help yeah. with, you know, from a pedagogical standpoint. Mm -hmm. and, and because actually, again, bass comes with the new flamenco or the post new exactly. flamenco. Exactly, yeah. So 80s, you're, you're, late 70s. Yeah. You know, mm. Yeah. So yeah. it's relatively new, let's say. So, mm -hmm. so you are in a point where you can kind of start to make sense about. Would you agree with that? Yeah. That you're kind of making sense of the whole thing. What have you been? Tell me about mm. your research in the yeah, studies and research in yeah, the last what, yeah. three years at least. Three years, yeah, yeah. three years. Two years deeper. Uh, two, two years deeper. I yeah. think the the idea came. I have. I think I have some things to say about yeah. about, and I've been mm. seeing some things and and also like uh, my experiences uh, communicating with musicians that are like me that we don't born in the tradition. Yes. So that, that makes me like think, like, there's so many things I could say about, and I would like to, like, take it, like, in an academic level. Yes. So that was my interest in the doctoral program in the Sibelius Academy. Yeah. You're applying this year. I'm applying, yes. yes that's good. I've been in no, the no, no. supernumerary studies. No. I've been, no, like, no. Um, working pre your... preparatory student, yeah, yeah. it's called. So I've been working on that two years, and I hope this year the jury yeah. Will, yeah. Will, will find it interesting. But, but you, it, have, you have, a, it showed me, I, I've seen, you have a, a lot of work done already because I've seen scores and I've, yeah, I've seen... Yeah, I've been mean, writing and because of two years you, you, you really, and it's reshaping yeah. because there are so many things, for example, if I look myself back three years when I did my first application, oh yeah. my God, it's very different nowadays. Yeah, yeah. So it's changed quite a, quite a lot during the process, yeah. I think that's the thing. So if I get in the program now, I will be much ready mm. that compared to three years ago. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. tell, tell me about that. So you're looking for you're looking for a way of what of of talking to addressing young musicians, musicians in other traditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there is this kind of communication between singers and bass lines. Exactly. How, how does that work? Yeah. So the original idea was more like flamenco bass. Mm -hmm. And then I, I realized that I have, mm, I have more things to say if I open it up to a wider scope of instrumentalists. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I decided that it would be really uh, interesting now to focus on the way the relationship between instrument, instrumentalists and singers okay. and vocals. Yeah. So I think that's the thing, like uh, the flamenco, the root is the vocal tradition. Okay. And I use kind of like flamenco as a case study, okay. but I'm not like, if I hope that goes through, it will not be like a flamencology research. Yeah. It will be more like a research using a case study of a bass player interested on flamenco and transcribing from singers and finding the relationship between singers. So it's okay. collaboration between Wait. singers and... It's to, oops. <laughs> <laughs> We've, it was yeah. the table. Yeah, it was the table. <laughs> it wasn't that we have drank already a full. <clears throat> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's the, the, I think that's something that it would be very interesting to talk about. And that's, I found that it would be beneficial for others as well. Yeah. So many people who are like 
uh, interested in our tradition. Most of the traditions come from vocal, yes. because it's the most like in that instrument we have. And then some instrument becomes like the representative, but the instruments emulate the vocals. Same, same. And I believe, I believe the same. Yeah. And with the, back the same pipes, for backpipes. With, uh, you emulate the voice, yeah, yeah. and and then you know th that something grows from, from exactly. There. Yeah. yeah. So you think there's there's this communication going back and forth, and yes. that that yeah, and that the bass has a way of mm -hmm. communicating with the singer somehow. Or? Yeah, the bass uh, has a, a very interesting role, mm. and that's something that uh, first of all the bass. It doesn't. It's not part of the, tra the traditional mm. ensemble, yeah. and then the, therefore the bass can take the role of the guitar, or can take the role of the vocals, yes. or can take the role of an accompaniment instrument like a flute or violin. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting. You can decide yeah. what kind of role, and that's somehow what I think, what I understand as counterpoint. Like what okay. counterpoint is like there is a, a line, and you are like, like superposing different like yeah so you go, you're so going into the classical reign cl classical universe mm. to say okay even i have this idea and the the most similar thing i find in classical music would be yeah. to say that this is a counterpoint yeah classical music it has the counterpoint that's like a really established, thorough esta yeah. established study and something that yeah. it's taken very far by yeah. uh, vocal uh, choir, choirs by yeah. orchestration but I found that the, the way I approach it is more connected to what, what some people call just counterpoint. Okay. Or counterpoint that happened, for example, if you listen to Miles Davis' quintet, yeah. there was the, the tenor saxophone and the trumpet. Yeah. And that was the, the most like, uh, uh, interesting counterpoint lines that I hear like, from, from that yes. time. There's, there's this incredible guy, American guy, that now I, I, I should, I don't know if you know about him, he's developing this thing that it, call, it calls bebop counterpoint. And it's it's crazy. Yeah, so it's I would love to see <laughs> yes, it. Yeah. Very interesting. But, but it's it's the thing, same line. Course, it's yeah. the same line of research. So it's um, it's something that's happening now. Of course. Um, uh, you know. And uh, when I studied in Berkeley, my favorite uh, course was uh, Jazz Counterpoint by okay. Bob Pilkington, wonderful yeah. teacher. Yeah. So that's that's the way they, these these two guys make counterpoint lines in the moment. Mm. Listen to each other and finding everybody register. And that's something that happens in the big band. It has happened in Tutti or something that is called Soli, or it can happen in many different tools. Yeah. And that's something that I kind of like think, okay, this, this can work really well with rhythmic music like flamenco. Yeah. Uh, not so much I'm taking from the classical counterpoint, although yeah, yeah. I, I would like to master it and like, yeah. you know, be able to like, you know, really understand the language and, and I'm very interested. But mm. I think the, the way we understand the classical counterpoint with it's all different. the rules, Mm. will not fit so much a popular music style yeah. such as flamenco. Yeah. So I think that's kind of like this relationship between two instruments can go beyond the bass and the vocals. Yeah. It can be vocals and cello, vocals and flute, mm. why not? Vocals and trombone, vocals and any kind of like a lower instrument. Okay. Any kind of instrument that is not like a, in a high register and can mm. accompany a higher register instrument. Yeah. There are many instruments in that range. So it becomes, your research in a way becomes more universal. That's my yeah. point, exactly. That's interesting. Yeah. And, and you, you say flamenco as a case study, so, so you think that someone could look at your research with a trombone? Mm -hmm. That's the point. And with a different folk tradition. Exactly. Yeah. And also inspire their own folk traditions. Yes, yeah. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Because, I don't know if you agree, but I have, I have this idea in... in in music research and artistic research, well, in fact, in any kind of research, that um, we have this duty to give back. And you've been, we were, were even thinking about this, even in the folk uh, and cultural exchanges, that there's, there's a give and take. Mm. You know? But in the academia and in, in, in spe especially in doctoral research, um, you're being granted an opportunity to research mm -hmm. and to give something back to the academia. So I'm really interested when, when you say that some, some, somehow you want to make your own personal experience uh, as universal as possible and as that people can actually take something away from it mm. and apply it to something else, you know. Yes. You know, because not everyone will be a Spanish 
fretless bass player yeah. that is interested in flamenco, you know, that's very you. I but know if, in 2020, nobody has to, I think, mm. be like everybody has access to everything. If you look for it, exactly. Well, it has been always like that, but I believe like we live in such a global society that uh, yeah. like there is many well-established artists that are. Yeah, but I mean, in the sense that you are making it accessible. Mm, yes. You know, you're making it yes. in a way that anyone can understand it. Mm. Everyone can read it. Absolutely. It's like, oh, you don't know anything about flamenco, so don't even bother reading my reading my uh, research because you won't understand it. That's exactly. not at That's all. That's not the point. Yeah. And maybe that will be the point if you want to research some specific aspect of flamenco mm. in Spain, in a university, for example, where they have like really strong tradition in yeah. some kind of... Then you can be very specific on one aspect that you think that. But my point will be to how in an international environment, yeah. how this research will be done in an international environment. Of course. And that's, I think, the, the interesting. There's many research has been done in Sibelius Academy with African music, with Finnish folk music, of course, but yeah. also Scandinavian music, yeah. also like um, Eastern music, like Balkan music, mm -hmm. Russian music tradition. So there's a lot of like opportunities to wide up, uh, yeah. widen. widen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 My friend. We are running out of beer. Yeah, we're running out of beer. <laughs> well. I'm really looking forward to what's coming out of that research. I mean, the research is going, so I'm, I'm sure I'll hear more about it. I will keep you posted. But I really hope it is as a doctoral student. Thank you so really much. Look for, thank you. Cheers. Salud. Cheers. <laughs> it's empty, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Great. Good. Thank you. Go And it doesn't have to have any kind of start or whatever. Yeah. Okay, cool. And I'm, I'm thirsty, so. <laughs> it's recording? Okay. This does, it doesn't have a live audience, okay? So no laughing or. You see? You see? That's why. Sure. Okay.